compound interest part 2 Hi, I'm Daniel Souza and welcome to Aptitude Academy. This is part 2 on the lecture on compound interest. Here's the first problem. Problem 1. The difference between the compound interest and simple interest on a certain sum at 10% per annum for 2 years is rupees 631. Find the sum. All right, now for the first sum they've said that the rate is 10%, t is 2 years and they said that the difference between the compound interest and the simple interest is 631 rupees. Now they've asked you to find the principal amount or the sum. Now we know that the formula for the amount when a bank uses CI is P into 1 plus R by 100 raised to N. Now CI will be this entire amount, this entire amount, so P into 1 plus R by 100 raised to N minus the initial amount. That is the difference from the two amounts, which is in fact your compound interest. Now let's calculate it for this. So you've got P here, 1 plus R is 10, so 10 by 100, uh, raised to 2, minus P. So P you can keep outside, 1 plus, this is 0.1, the whole square, minus P. So this is P into 1.1, the whole square, minus P. So this is P into, 1.1 square is 1.21, and if you take P common, this is minus 1, so this is point 1p. Now this is your compound interest. Now we can get the simple interest and find the difference. Now compound interest is 0.21p. Now SI is equal to PTR upon 100. Right? Now P we don't know. We know T is 2 and we know R is 10. Divide by 100. So it says 1s are, 10s are, 5s are. So 1 by 5 is 0 0.2. 0 0.2p. So now we know CI minus PI minus SI, sorry, SI is equal to 0.21P minus 0.2P. So if you take P outside, it becomes 0 0.21 minus 0 0.2 is equal to 0 0.01P, which is also 1 by 100 into P. Now we know that CI minus SI is equal to 631. So 631 is equal to P by 100 implies P is equal to 631 into 100 is equal to 63,100 rupees. This is your final answer. Let's move on to problem number two. Problem two. At what rate of compound interest per annum will a sum of rupees 1,200 become rupees 1,348.32 in two years? All right, now the second sum, they've asked you what is the rate at which the amount 1,200 will become 1,348.32 rupees after two years. So now they've given you X. This X is the amount that is one plus, um, sorry, P into one plus R by 100 raised to N, right? This is your X. So you can write it is equal to X. Now substitute the values and simplify. So now we've got 1,200 here, right? We know P, one plus R is what we need to find out. So we keep it as it is, divided by 100, N is two. And we know x is 1348.32. So now we can take 1200 here. So 1 plus r divided by 100, the whole square is equal to 1348.32 divided by 1200. Now to make this faster, I've done the simplification. It comes out to 1.1236. Right? Now, now we've got a square here. So we need to eliminate that. So you take a square root on both the sides. So when you take a square root, 1 plus r divided by 100, the whole square is equal to square root of 1.1236. Now, this square root and this square will get cancelled out. So, you basically have 1 plus r by 100 is equal to the square root of 1.1236, which comes out to be 1.06. You can verify these numbers later. Now, we've got 1 plus r by 100 is equal to 1.06. So, now, if you take 1 this side, it becomes r by 100 is equal to 1.06 minus 1, which is equal to 0 0.06. So implies R is equal to 0 0.06 into 100, which is equal to 6%. That is the required rate of interest. Easy, right? Let's go into problem number three. Problem three. What is the least number of complete years in which a sum of money 
put out at 20% compound interest will be more than double of its principal amount. Right, now for the third sum, they're saying that what will be the minimum amount of years such that my X amount of money that I get at the end will be greater than twice the principal amount that I started with if my rate is fixed at 20%. So now we already know the formula for X. X is equal to P into 1 plus R divided by 100 raised to N. Now let us keep X as 2P. First we'll find what is N for 2P. Then we know that if, if you get some point, uh, say we get some 2.413, the answer will be 3. You round it off to the next number, so it will definitely be greater than 2P. That's all. Okay. So now you've got X is 2P. You can keep, uh, you can write the rest of it here. P into 1 plus R by 100 raised to N. Now P and P gets cancelled. So 2 is equal to 1 plus R is 20 divided by 100 raised to N. So this is 1 plus 0.2 raised to n. So it implies 2 is equal to 1.2 raised to n. Now this is your condition. Now you have to find this value of n such that it is greater than 2. Right? Okay. Now I'll just erase this and rewrite it again. Because I need to tell you something very important. So now this is the place where most students would make a mistake. They will think, okay, I've got 2 and I've got 1.2. Now. I'll simplify this further. I will keep this 2 here, 1.2. I will eliminate this dot and I will put a 0 here. So now 12 is less than 20. If you square 12 up, right, if you put it here, it becomes 144, which is definitely greater than 20. So they think that this is square and they think n is 2, which is completely incorrect. There will be an option with n is equal to 2. That is just to throw you off. So you can't do this thing. Alright, don't be that genius. Now, the way you do it is you simply have to multiply. That's the only way you can get your answer. So now, 1.2 into 1.2 is equal to 1.44. 12 squared is 144. Now, 144 into 1.2 is equal to 1.728. Now, 1.728 is still lesser than 2, right? So now we've reached 1.2 into 1.2, that is 144. We have to multiply one more 1.2 that gives us 1.728, which is still less than 2. So we need to multiply it once more. 1.2 here. Then this gives you 2.0736. This number is greater than 2. So you know that if you put another 1.2 here, that is 1.2 raised to 4, it will give you 2.0736, which is greater than twice your initial amount. So hence your answer, n is equal to 4 years. Simple, right? Alright, so this is part 2 on lecture on compound interest. If you found this video helpful, do like it, subscribe to my channel and share this video. In part 3, I'll do many more tougher problems. I'd also like it if you share this video on Facebook and help out as many students as possible. Spread the knowledge. Cheers! Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button to get notification of any videos that I release. I make new videos every Thursday. Until then, spread the knowledge.